Welcome back. We are checking in on now on our congressional delegation and their work this week. Republican Representative Glenn Grothman getting behind a bipartisan push to make EpiPens more widespread. Grothman joins me now. Good morning. Good morning. So we have a lot to get into, but let's just start with what I referenced. So under my understanding, this bill, the states would get preference for grant money under this bill you're introducing that tries to nationalize, you know, better access, training to EpiPens. What inspired this? Well, the, the death of Dylan Miller uh, up in Manitowoc County, he died after a bee sting. 500 to 1,000 Americans every year uh, die in some allergic anaphylactic shock like this. Uh, the family, Angel Miller, out of this, decided to do all she could possibly do to make sure no other family had to go through this. She passed a similar law in the state legislature, but we want this law to go nationwide. You can imagine how horrific it would be if one of your loved ones or yourself went into anaphylaxis shock, let's say in a restaurant due to an allergy or a picnic due to a bee sting, and nobody was able to do anything. Think how many lives could we save if we had more and more people with these EpiPens knowing how to use it there to save a life. So our goal in a very bipartisan effort, and I was so honored this week to find Debbie Dingell, who's a very uh, experienced congresswoman from Michigan, uh, to help me get some Democrat uh, help on this end and hopefully get the bill out of the House sometime in the next two months. I want to turn to a couple of the topics. In fact, we're, we're taping this Friday morning, uh, just a few minutes ago, frankly, your colleague, uh, Representative uh, Mike Gallagher up in Green Bay, just announced he won't be seeking a Senate run against uh, Tammy Baldwin in 2024. Uh, did you expect this? Uh, it, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, I know Mike has a very important responsibility given any uh, involving Red China, and I don't know, given all the responsibility he has here, if uh, he would want to take the additional time it takes to throw yourself into a state by race. Do you think the congressional, the Republican con congressional delegation in Wisconsin is going to get behind, you know, we all know that Tom Tiffany is p p considering a run? Well, uh, I think Tom would make a great U.S. Senator. I know he's going to have to decide and says he's going to spend the next few months looking at it. I'm sure he'll get around the state and have to evaluate how long it will handle. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, we, we just saw Donald Trump indicted for, indicted for a second time uh, just, you know, on, here on Thursday. Do you think this, this it makes any kind of impact in the 2024 race? Um, well, I think there's a feeling among some of us that one of the reasons that they're trying to go after Donald Trump is they're trying to make him more of a sympathetic figure. I think there's certain people who want Donald Trump to be the Republican nominee, and therefore it doesn't surprise me that uh, some of the Democrats are trying to make Donald Trump a little bit of a martyr. And then last thing I wanted to touch on, uh, you made some headlines recently, your comments in the House about President Joe Biden making it, in your words, almost impossible to appoint federal judges that are, you know, white, straight males, knowing, you know, there's that 70% of all sitting federal judges are white and male. That's according to a 2022 report from the American Bar Association. Have just given the data, would do you still stand behind those comments? Well, the comments are in response to a study that in Joe Biden's first two years, he appointed out of 97 judges, three white heterosexual males. It is obvious Joe Biden is discriminating against uh, white heterosexual males, and, and I'll stand behind it. I do not like Joe Biden's apparent hostility to that segment of our society. And the fact that just over the course of history, white heterosexual males form the vast majority of federal judges, that, that shouldn't impact well, it's because, that, that, it's because white heterosexual males uh, were the vast majority of lawyers in this country's history. You know, I don't know what the numbers are, let's say in 1980 or something like that. I would be surprised that white heterosexual males didn't comprise, say, over 90% of the uh, of the lawyers say over 40 years of age all right we've covered a lot of ground anything you want to add and, well i'll also say you should be looking at hiring the best person this idea of saying i'm going to look for this segment of society and not necessarily the right person is ridiculous you could for example say where do people go to law school there's been some comments that we have way too many judges who went to harvard or yale or stanford and I think that's probably true, but people never talk about that. They don't say, well, we should do a 10-year pause 
uh, the judges who went to law school and I wouldn't. Are you or, there you're talking about more genuine diversity. Are you suggesting that the people of color that President Biden has appointed are not qualified for the job? I'm just saying we only have three out of 97 judges, heterosexual white males. It's obvious he is trying to appoint people from a group other than that. And if you are in that group, you have a tougher, uh, tougher sledding than other applicants. Right, but to answer my question, do you believe those, you know, out of 97, those others are not qualified then? That, that seems like the logical conclusion to what you're saying? No, we have to go through them. I mean, you know, you heard the testimony of uh, President Biden's Supreme Court pick. I mean, you know, I, I think uh, some people felt that wasn't the strongest testimony. You can see, for example, in other areas of the Biden administration, people point out is Pete Buttigieg the best uh, transportation secretary. I don't think anybody thinks that. I mean, President Biden is obsessed with diversity. And he defines diversity racially or gender-wise. He doesn't define it by opinions that you hold on things. Uh, the same with regard to legal things, you would say, you know, did they engage in private practice? Were they primarily family law? Were they primarily criminal law? There you have genuine diversity. President Biden is one of these people who is, seems disproportionately uh, interested in where your ancestors come from, where your great great grandfather is born. Would you at least acknowledge that people of color in the past have had more barriers, qualified people of color, to achieving these types of positions? Um, I think mean, it was a time in our country that was true. I don't think that's been true to say the last 25 years. All right, we could continue this conversation for a while. I appreciate your appreciate you coming on the show and taking the time this morning. Thank you. All right, we will be right back.